Whether you know it or not, all women test men to gauge their intentions, their attraction, and their character. And don't feel bad because men do the same thing in their own way. However, some of these tests are manipulative and even toxic. And instead of getting you to truly evaluate a guy, will express neediness, immaturity, insecurity, and will actually lower your chances of attracting a masculine and conscious man into your life. So today, I'm revealing five loosened ways women test men and much higher value alternatives that will not only separate you from the rest, but will get you the clarity you're seeking from a guy. Men and women have been testing each other consciously and subconsciously from the beginning of time. However, not all tests are created equally. And what I want to do today is shed light on five tests that really don't serve you, but you might be subconsciously stepping into and are lowering your chances of getting the type of relationship you want and showing up the high value way that will make it clear to the guy you're connecting with that he should focus his attention and his interest on you versus someone else. Examples of healthy tests are when you set a boundary with a guy. You set a boundary saying, here's something that I can't experience or here's something that I need to do to be done a certain way. Whether you know it or not, that's a test. Why? Because if the guy chooses to honor that boundary, then he passes the test. If he chooses not to honor the boundary, then he fails the test. A preference test would be something where you share something that's important to you or maybe a type of food that you're really excited about with a secret hope that the guy will remember it. And maybe next time he asks you on a date, he asks you for that type of food for, for a restaurant, for example. Another type of test you might be secretly running on a guy will be a, an important date test where you're sharing, for example, hey, next Saturday is my birthday and there's a secret hope that the guy is going to remember your birthday, call you, text you, invite you to something. Now, if he does, he passes the test. If he doesn't, then maybe that date wasn't as important to him as it needed to be. Now, there's going to be tests that you run that will go against you. The first one is what I call the mood reader test. And here's how it goes. You have an unexpressed need for the guy you're connecting with to be interested in you and to dig deeper and to help you process an emotion. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're sad. Maybe you're a combination of all those things. And it could be something to do with your own life or something to do with him. But rather than saying, here's what I'm looking for. Here's what I'm needing right now. You act in a way that shows him clearly there's something wrong. Maybe you're very short with them. Maybe you are breathing very shallowly. There's an embodiment of a feeling of numbness or pain. But when he asks you, is there something going on? Is there something wrong? Instead of expressing what you need, you say no. And you don't say no because there's nothing going on, but because you want him to dig deeper. You want to see if he's really interested in your emotional well-being to the point where he's willing to break down walls and really go deep and say, what's going on? Why does this not work? Two reasons. Number one, because the guy might misinterpret you saying nothing's going on with maybe nothing's going on because guys are very direct. Or maybe he's misinterpreting the something's going on inside of you, but you don't want to share it and he doesn't want to test that. He doesn't want to make you uncomfortable. So what would be a healthy alternative than trying to, in some way of a Romeo and Juliet or soap opera way, express this myriad of emotions is to say, you know what, right now, I'm not even sure what's going on inside of me. The truth is there's something going on and I feel really heavy, but I'm not sure what's going on. So would you please help me to hold some space and say, sure, so I can figure out what's going on or here's what's really going on, but I feel very scared about sharing it with anyone. It would mean a lot to me if you keep this between us. That's a way for you to express a need, to express your want in that moment, to express your emotions, in such a way that the guy can honestly say, you know what? Yes, let me hold some space for you. Or I'm not ready for that. Either way, you can still test his emotional intelligence, but in a way that's practical instead of manipulative in nature. Number two is the catch me if you can, or I'm really hard to get test. Here's how it goes. You're attracted to a guy, but you don't want to be vulnerable and you don't want him to know that he's, you're attracted to him in case he doesn't like you or in case you seem needy. So instead of being excited when you see him, instead of expressing that connection to him that you feel maybe brewing up in your chest, you're going to play the hot and cold game where he looks at you and you look away. And instead of smiling, you pretend that you're not listening to him. So just in the case that you can generate some extra interest in him, or if maybe he's the type of guy who wants to ask you on a date, 
and to test if he's really, really interested, you decline his offer, not because you don't want to see him, but because you want to see if he asks you another time. Maybe he asks you to do something that weekend, but again, in a moment of testing him, instead of saying, yes, I'm available, you say, I'm not available, even though you are, to see if he's going to push further along. There's multiple variations of this test, but here's the thing. The thing you need to know is that this is a losing game. If you really want to know if the guy is interested in pursuing you, the healthiest way is to have a clear and direct conversation with them. Is it easy? No, but it's easier than playing circumventing games that never get you the true answer of what you want. And those conversations will have to express in some ways what you are interested in experiencing in a dating situation or in a relationship in your life, not with him, with someone. And he needs to be willing and able to express, here's where I'm going for right now. Here's where I'm at in my life right now. Here's the type of relationship, the connection, the dating experience I'm looking for. If he can't express that, then why invest time in him? If he can't express that and it's something that you're looking for, then bingo, you're winning. If he can't express that it's something different than what you're looking for, you're also winning because now you know you shouldn't invest time on that direction. The clearest way for you to understand the guy's intentions, for you to understand if the guy's really interested in pursuing you, is to be very clear about what is your mode of pursuit that makes you feel safe, that makes you feel at peace, that makes you feel like he's really stepping up, and in the clearest, most direct of way, communicate it as early as possible, not as a demand, but as a possibility of the keys to unlock your heart if he wants to step into them. The third test is what I call the jealousy test, which is where, again, you're not sure if a guy is really interested in you, and instead of spending more time with them, or instead of gauging his actions, or instead of having a conversation with them, instead of flirting more with them, Instead of asking questions, you're going to throw a test where you flirt with a guy in front of him, or you share something about a guy that you're interested in in front of him, just to see if you get a reaction from him. Here's the thing. Although you might get an initial reaction and you might even change his behavior for a bit, that is a very circumvented sideways way to express that you want to find out what's going on between both of you, or for you to figure out what's really going on with them. My recommendation is that you don't play those games. Why? Because it's very possible the guy will understand you talking about another guy. Like maybe I shouldn't invest time on her because that's what's going on. Or maybe if you do that and he gets the feeling that there's, because guys are not stupid. If he gets the feeling that you might be trying to manipulate his answer, that he'll double down in his heart. And even though he's interested in you, he'll say, nah, you know what? Right now, I'm going to stay away from this. One thing that should be very clear to you as a conscious, incredible woman listening to this video is that men hate, I'm underlying this, this, I'm going to underline this five times. Men hate drama. They want the clearest, the most direct path into understanding what you're about and what you're interested in. Now, before I share the last two losing strategies that you don't want to miss out on, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine. Women who have not experienced the type of relationship that they've been seeking sometimes for decades and help them to finally attract their forever guy. And what I've done is I put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. I will show you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll get in 60 seconds a couple of things. Number one, the answer to the question why you're still single. Number two, a custom report that's going to share with you based on your unique blind spot. What is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time? The fourth losing test women play on men is what I call the soulmate test. And here's how it goes. It's a little more complex than the other ones, but you have a list of ideals in terms of the way a guy reacts, the way a guy thinks, the way a guy understands you. And instead of taking the time, because it takes time and energy to express needs, to express values, to ask powerful, difficult, challenging questions, and to invest a lot of time to get to know someone, you have this misconception based on a romantic myth that if the guy is the guy that you're hoping for, that he should already know some things, that he should be able to finish your sentences, metaphorically speaking, that he should understand your needs and your wants, and that there's no need to actually, if you have to express it, then it doesn't count. And if you have to share something 
with him, then it lost the magic of the whole thing. So you're kind of hoping for him to be a clairvoyant, a mind reader, and to kind of already get what you're hoping for. And if he doesn't act in a specific way, and because of that, you don't feel super intense, then maybe he's not your soulmate. The right guy should understand. The right guy should already know is the myth that you're maybe going for. So my strong recommendation on this one is that there is no perfect soulmate. There is no perfect partner. I don't believe that the one exists. Why? Because think about it. There's four billion men on this planet, give or take. The likelihood there's going to be many of the ones is very high. So there's going to be different people that could fit the bill in different ways. Obviously, every person is unique. But when you go for this vision where the right person should kind of already know and it should feel right from the start, then you forgo the growth and the vulnerability and the change and the expression of needs and the asking of needs that actually builds a strong foundation of friendship that will endure the test of time. The last losing strategy, the last losing way in which women test men is what I call the chemistry test. And the chemistry test also is a little bit more nuanced than the first three. And that's where you have this test in your heart. You have this feeling, this specific essence, flavor, this undescribable itch that is scratched in a very specific way. And when you connect to a guy, you're secretly hoping for that chemistry to flourish and expand like the big bang from zero to the universe in one second. If you don't feel that, if you don't feel like the chemistry is there from the get-go, then he fails the chemistry test. He's not the guy because the right guy should feel a certain way. You should know. And although every now and then that happens on the minority of cases, the majority of human beings develop chemistry through connection, through time, through vulnerability, through shared experiences, through spending and investing time together. So when you have this subconscious chemistry test that guys may pass immediately or not pass, there's two risks for you. The first one is pretty obvious. You might connect to the guy who is a trauma bond to you or a guy that is absolutely wrong for you, but there's something in his charisma, in his way of showing up, in his love bombing even, in his way of maybe manipulating the situation to make you feel more validated, that might end up being the worst possible situation for you. But because you feel the chemistry, you give them a full go, you forgo some steps and you go from zero to 60 miles an hour in two seconds, like the fast Tesla. Now, the second challenge that you might experience is that you're gonna leave so many awesome men on the table. Guys who could have been life partners and friends and stand by your side through thick and thin, I'm never asking you to connect to a guy and commit to a guy that you don't develop chemistry for, obviously. But I'm asking you to hold that chemistry of what it should feel like in a more loose way at the beginning so that you develop more intimacy and through the intimacy, evaluate if it can grow or not grow. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel. If you click like and subscribe, because this is how I can reach more women and help them to understand maybe principles that many people are not talking about right now. And if you want to understand how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, you can watch the next video right here.